Aloha. Aloha, and welcome to What's Bugging You, brought to you by Hawaii's leader in pest control and the first company in Hawaii to earn the National Quality Pro Certification, Sandwich Isle Pest Solutions. Now, here's the host of our show, Mike Buck. Oh, yeah, and I love to say this. What's bugging you? You're going to find out today exactly not only what's bugging you, but what you can do about it. Uh, and today we've got a new player in the studio. His name is Ian Mateo. He's the general manager of uh, Sandwich Isle and been there uh, since almost since its inception. Well, not quite inception, but a long time uh, since 2002 joins us today. Uh, and we're going to talk about uh, some of the stuff that he's an expert in. Uh, he is a, an associate certified entomologist and on the uh, NPMA, that's the National Pest Management Association uh, Leadership Development Council. That's a bunch of stuff and a local boy. Good morning. Good morning. And good afternoon and all of that stuff. Hey, by the way, um, you know, we call this program What's Bugging You. When you were a kid, were you like most of us? Were you like into bugs? I was into bugs. Were you ever afraid of them? Uh, <laughs> I actually have a big fear of American cockroaches. Is that right? Yeah. I have a yeah. huge fear of them. <laughs> I will scream yeah. at the top of my lungs. I yeah. won't go anywhere near them. You know what? We have seen over the years, and I'm sure you know this, a lot of times – uh, the stereotypical woman, when she goes in the kitchen and there's a mouse, she eek and she jumps on the stool. Grown men do that too, right? That's me. Yeah, me too. I, <laughs> there's something about it, and I think it, it came when I was a small. The thing that that really, really paralyzes me, and my, and Michael both and I have talked about this too, is centipedes. Okay. One day on Christmas Day, in, when I was a small kid in Kahala, my grandpa reached in his jacket pocket wow. to get his pipe, uh-huh. and he pulled up his hand, and he had a centipede hanging from it, and it bit him, oh. and his hand swolled up like a basketball, and we almost lost him. Wow. So I've been freaked about that ever since. <laughs> I've been bitten. I didn't, I, you know, it wasn't all that bad of a deal. But it's kind of funny, because you, here are you in the pest business, and there's some of the pests you don't like. American roaches, I tell you, yeah. I've dedicated my life because of that fear yeah. to get rid of them. Is it, is it, now look, they're there no matter what, right? Uh-huh. But w- what you guys talk about is management of them. Mm-hmm. You know, what, what would be, before we get into the topics of the day and all of that stuff, since it's your, 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 your deal, um, what would get rid of the, the big American cockroaches? American roaches, the mm-hmm. big ones. Yeah, the big um, monsters. The big monsters, yeah. the B-52s, mm-hmm. they generally live outside. Okay. So if you can do a good job of keeping them out mm-hmm. by having door sweeps, having mm-hmm. window screens that are sealed and yeah. without pukas. A mm-hmm. lot of our window screens have holes oh, yeah, in them. Yeah. Uh, seal those up. Uh, good home maintenance will keep most mm. of them out. It's hard for them to establish uh, nests inside. If you don't leave food on the counter... You probably won't find them on the counter. Probably we won't yeah, find yeah. them on the counter. Yep. And what is what is it about it? And I, I must tell you something. When I leave for my regular uh, shift here at KHR uh, on the weekdays, it's it's dark. It's okay. dark in the morning, and I have to leave the kitchen light on because my wife does not want to go in the kitchen <laughs> in case there's a roach on the floor. Now there hasn't been for years, okay. but isn't that amazing that, that that for some reason? What about when you flip on the light and they go <laughs> like that? You know, they're cruising at night. Yeah. They can see just fine in the yeah, dark. Yeah, yeah. You flip on the light, they say, "Oops, we got to get out of here." Okay. We generally, and today, gang, we're going to talk about swarming termites because, you know, this is the time of the year that that happens. But we also want to tell you that there's sometimes uh, uh, what we try to do is begin a little bit with what's what's in the news. And unfortunately, uh, rearing their ugly head once again are our bed bugs. What do you, uh, you guys keep a really good statistical data about calls and everything else. What was this last week like in the bed, bed bug department? Um, bed bugs have definitely been on a rise. Mm-hmm. I, I asked our office, what are they getting calls about most? A couple of items came up, but bed bugs was really hot. Mm-hmm. Um, there was a study done by H- HPR put out a, uh, a study. Uh, I think they pulled that from the NPR. Mm-hmm. Nationally, within the pest control industry, um, bed bugs in nursing homes specifically are up 60%. Um, from wow. the year previous of 46%. And, and, you know, the unfortunate thing about that, Ian, is probably that a lot of our folks in those facilities are in bed longer than the rest of us. I mean, you know, maybe for an hour or more to a day. And, and I, from what I understand, particularly if somebody is susceptible, that, that these can be really health-threatening. They can. Um, for a lot of people, it causes rashes. Mm-hmm. Um, some people will break out in a very nasty, ugly yeah. rash, welts all over their body. Um, and, you know, when I read the story, I said, well, geez, Hawaii is so family oriented. Mm-hmm. We probably should get that out there. Most of our nursing homes do a good job of getting professionals to come in and treat for bedbugs. Mm-hmm. 
the problem is is finding them. So yeah. I mean, what can we do to help out our kupuna? You can bring your dog, man. I love that thing. I <laughs> love that thing. You know, and and by the way, this is something I don't think people understand uh, as much as I've talked about it in the past. And that these canine, they're really special, and 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 their training must be really intense because they can find. They found in my studio one time one bed bug that we hid in the box. The, the canines are highly effective. Yeah. Unfortunately, Mike, those canines are, we retired those canines. Yeah, I know. They got to go, right? They, they have a, a work-life expectancy. Mm-hmm. They served Sandwich Isle well. Uh, they're actually retired on mm-hmm. Michael's property now, mm-hmm. running with a pack of dogs, something that that's they've nice. always yeah, wanted to that's do. That's good. Yeah. Um, okay. Let's let's uh, let's get into some things uh, about what we're going to do uh, today. Um, Michael has often said, and, and we all know about this. It's not if, it's when. I mean, you know, if you've got termites, you, you're if you don't have termites, wait a few minutes, you'll get them. Uh, <laughs> it, that doesn't mean though that people have to lose the lose the war, and there's battles that they can fight. Um, has this seems to be a year that that. That they're swarming more. At least in my neighborhood, they are. What do you get that sense too? I mean, you guys are are, are statewide, but particularly right. here on Oahu, um, is it like El Nino? Is that a termite year? What does it mean? This this has got to be the El Nino year of termite mm-hmm. swarms. As far back as I can remember, um, I don't think it's been this bad. At least bad. At least for another. At least going back ten years, it's been bad. Every night when I go outside my office, the dry, the termites are swarming. Either drywood termites uh, mm-hmm. and ground termites specifically. Mm-hmm. We haven't seen yeah. this many ground termite swarms in a long, long time. You know, I know that there are lots of different kinds of termites, and, and most of us know that there there's the flying termites that come in on the roof and come in on the swarms and everything else. But the ground termites, um, you you may not even see them, right? I mean, they might just come in from. What, what's the difference between the for, the the foremost and some of the other termites? Uh, well, both termite species fly. So the drywood termites, and those are the termites that you would generally fumigate your home for mm-hmm. with the tarps and tarpaulin mm-hmm. and whatnot. Those termites fly. Ground termites will fly as well. All those guys are reproductives. Their mm-hmm. job is to go out and establish new colonies. Mm-hmm. But when you see ground termites flying, that means there's a colony nearby. There's there's a colony looking yeah, to... somebody's to, there. Somebody's yeah. there. Yeah. Um, but fortunately, there are things that you can do to protect your home. Um Again, I asked our office, what are we getting a lot of calls about? And uh, we've gotten a lot of calls about active ground termites mm-hmm. in homes already. One of the things that I know that you had a lot of uh, background in prior to becoming general manager was this wonderful Centricon system where you have these stations. And I think that, you know, m- there are people out there that are listening that maybe they had them and they don't anymore or they let it go or whatever. And there's been a paradigm shift. That whole business has changed. It's still a hole in the ground, huh? but it's different. What what? How is the... The ground term. I mean, how has that ground system changed over the years? Yeah, the Centricon system we use today is not the system we used yesteryear. Mm-hmm. The Centricon system essentially had a plastic station in the ground with regular southern yellow pine wood monitoring sticks mm-hmm. in them. Nothing special. Yeah, so you come, you open the thing up, you look at the stick. If there's pukas in it, you got termites. If not, you put it back and you move on. Put it back, you move yeah, on. Yeah, yeah. If there are termites in them, you take the termites out of the pieces of wood, mm. you put them into a little bait tube, and you put that back into the ground. Mm-hmm. Um, today's Centricon system is terrific, though. So today's Centricon system has that wood stick and the bait mm-hmm. combined into one unit gotcha. now. And it's kind of a plasticky cellulose material mm-hmm. fused with the active ingredient no, Novi Flumeron. That's what kills the termites. Yeah, the stuff. The yeah. stuff, yeah. the good stuff. Yeah. Um, it's already infused in there. It's put into the ground from the moment we install the system at your home. I, I became puzzled about one thing when I learned about that. There's this huge improvement in that. Mm-hmm. Is it still consumed in the way so that when the technician comes, he can tell if there's been activity? He can tell that there's been activity. Mm-hmm. In fact, there's a little disc on the bait tube that itself mm-hmm. where it kind of marks if the if the bait's been consumed. How much of it's been that, consumed. How much of it's, yeah, how much I get of it's it. been yeah. consumed. So. Yeah, it's like bartenders that, med, that mark the bottle, right? They know <laughs> tomorrow how much is supposed to be in there. Because I think that that's the main key. Because what i got to tell you is that your technicians, to me, the, first of all, your guys know my yard better than I do. They know my house better than I do. Good. And and I love the fact that, that somebody that's on that gets a detailed report at the end of a visit mm-hmm. on what was found. And that, that it's actually you want to find stuff. You know, you don't want to be surprised and have the roof come off, right? You want to see it. What's the advantage of finding it maybe early? 
it, it's about being proactive. Mm-hmm. A full-blown ground termite colony will eat up to four pounds of wood a day. A queen will lay 2,000 eggs a day. Her yeah. job is just to reproduce. Lay eggs. Just lay, lay eggs. eggs yeah. 2,000 a day. Yeah. A ground termite colony can have as many as 2 to 10 million members in it mm-hmm. with a foraging territory of a 100-yard radius. Yeah. So a football field away, there's a right. ground termite colony. Sure. They could be foraging at your home. Yeah, and see, the thing is that when, when you – this is a, a big number. When you say four pounds of wood a day, uh, if you do the math, this is day 24-7, 365. I mean, it just doesn't stop. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm, I'm, I know that even some of this – as you have we seen in some of these old buildings, I think just the other day you probably saw this on Hawaii News Now. There was a church uh, on on the island of Molokai at Halava, uh-huh. and that it just literally falling apart because of termites. You it, know they can do that much damage, right? I mean it's 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 not just looks or pukas. It's it's dangerous. Ground termites mm-hmm. specifically, mm-hmm. unlike drywood termites, mm-hmm. they eat quick. They get mm-hmm. in. Today you don't have a problem. Tomorrow you're replacing stuff. Yeah, yeah. I mean that's how bad they are. You know, but what what do you do to the naysayers that say, "Well, you know, we got them anyway." You, you know, that's just price the price you pay to live in paradise. I, I believe that there's more than anecdotal information. There's statistical information. You can take an old house, and if you treat it, you know, on a regular basis, and you do the right thing by it, you're you're not going to have to worry about structural integrity as long as you do the maintenance. Yeah, you know, you don't want to just pretend that mm-hmm. nothing will happen. You don't want to hope yeah. for the best. I don't see any <laughs> dropping, so I'm okay. I don't yeah, see any yeah, evidence. Yeah, yeah, not yeah. a big deal. Yeah. But ground termites will pop right up underneath your slab. They need a, a crack in the slab, one sixteenth of an inch to slip through. That's the thickness of a piece of paper. Yep, and yep. they're in. And then they go up through the walls. They're in the walls. They're in the roof system, yep. eating away. Okay. Four pounds a day. Yeah, and that's that's a phenomenal number. Okay, we're going to uh, – today, we're going to address that. We're going to address the different ways you can treat this. But I, I do want to make sure that we go back because we said something before, and it was my error to not spend a little bit more time on it. And that was you mentioned uh, particularly when we have kupuna in care facilities that, you know, you, you, you have to be kind of observant. You know, if you're going to go visit yeah. uh, Tutu and, and you notice she's got a little rash on her arm or something, uh, you might want to sort of look into this. I'm, I'm really worried. I want to go back to the bed bug thing for a few minutes sure. just so that we understand that sometimes out of sight, out of mind. And some of these things are not easy to detect. What, what are some of the things that you can look out for about somebody else maybe being, having been, you know, bitten by bed bugs? Sure. And, and here's an interesting statistic, Mike. Fifty percent of Americans do not react at all to mm-hmm. bed bug bites, so they could be living with them, being affected by them, yeah. but not even know. Okay. So what we want is we don't want to raise the alarm flags and mm-hmm. say, "All right, if there's a rash, it has to be bed bugs." But if there is an issue, if there is a rash, if there are bites, uh, mm-hmm. investigate a little bit further. Mm-hmm. Uh, look for blood spotting on sheets. Yeah, that's a good point. That's you a know, good one. Yeah. Um, or if you look at the mattresses, those black stains. When I grew up, I always thought those black stainings on the tufts of mattresses was mold. Yeah, or I did too, or dirt or whatever. Sure. Or dirt. Mm-hmm. Um, since bed bugs only eat blood, they only defecate blood. Mm-hmm. So that black staining is oftentimes coagulated blood that just wow. turns black. Uh, so look for those signs so that you can alert the healthcare facility. You know, there has been Ian, and uh, for those if you if you're just joining us, uh, Ian Mateo is the general manager over at Sandwich Child Pest Solutions, and uh, been there for a long time and I know that it used to be kind of common that you know you'd look in the newspaper and you you know you're a college student you got to go buy a bed from what I understand now it and and that's not to say that there aren't mattresses that are okay out there but is is that something people should really think about I mean you know people often say well I just got this I bought it on Craigslist or or whatever uh how dangerous is it I mean it seems like there are more bud bugs around now than there were 10 years ago Bed bugs are pretty common today, yeah. and mm-hmm. and the the sharing of mattresses mm-hmm. is a very common way uh, yeah. for bed bugs to spread around. I know that institutionally, you guys have gone into big places like hotels, mm-hmm. and they are so quick to react. From what I understand, is mm-hmm. there's bed bugs, they just start doing some serious replacement. They just don't want to ha- have that happen, right? Yeah, uh, some hotels or some places will simply replace the beds. Mm-hmm. Um, in today, again, in our technological age, mm-hmm. they actually have mattress encasements now. Yeah. Now- uh, that's something that I uh, somebody actually asked us after a previous program. 
Are those available through your company, uh, or or where where can people get these if they want to say, I'm going to buy a used mattress, I don't want to take any chances, I want to cover it as soon as I get it? Yes, they can buy them directly yeah. through us. Yeah. Um, the mattress encasements are terrific. They will entomb whatever bed bugs are mm-hmm. in there. The bed bugs won't be able to get out, nor will they be able to bite through or, or, yeah. or, or eat or feed through them. You know, I was shocked to find out how long they can get along without without eating or without without biting somebody. In worst case scenario, mm-hmm. a bed bug can lay dormant for up to a year. Some research That's shows. scary. A year, you know yeah. what about? I mean, you know, there, I know there's some people now that are afraid to travel because uh-huh. they don't want to put their suitcase down on a hotel room floor. I mean, I know that the whole industry is is looking at that. What can you tell people that maybe they got to travel for their work? Right. You know, right. they got to go all the neighbor islands twice twice a month. <laughs> uh, what what if any precautions do you do when you go into a, a hotel? Do you look? Yeah, absolutely. Because yeah. um, they're small, I can't see them. They're small. You know, mm-hmm. Bed bugs have five instars or five life changes until mm-hmm. they're adult. Um, their first two life changes, they're pretty hard to see. They're still pretty translucent. Mm-hmm. Um, but staining, uh, that's the most common thing that's that you'll one. find. Yeah. So I, I head straight, when I travel, I head straight for the bed. Mm-hmm. I head towards the headboard of the bed. And I, I peel back oh, yeah, all the sheets. Oh, yeah, you're going to lie down, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, I look at the mattress, the mm. tufts, the mm. creases, and those are, are easy places for them to hide okay. and breed. Those are the first places I look. Are they pretty much restricted to beds? I mean, I do know that there's been other times when people will say buy couches mm-hmm. or buy other furniture. Obviously, they're going to be where humans are. They're going to be wherever humans are. Mm-hmm. Um, chances are 70% of the infestation is going to be around the bed. Right. However, I've personally... Uh, been at bed bug jobs mm. where you have bed bugs in VCRs or DVD players, wow. in televisions, in radios. Just, they're just everywhere. They're just yeah, everywhere, yeah. fully infested. I mean, mm. and and what do you do at that point? You can't spray liquid chemicals. Yeah, on you those know what, things, Ian? Right? I'm glad you brought that up because I do know that there's people that like to Google and self medicate uh-huh. or, or self diagnose and then go fix themselves. From what I understand, I mean, there have been cases where somebody literally has come back from a trip uh-huh. and had a suitcase full of bed bugs in their clothing, in their suitcases. And what do you do? You put the suitcase on the bed, right? <laughs> and then you start opening it. Right. I, from what I understand is there's just really no way to deal with it. You really have to be on it all the time if you travel. You definitely and, have and, to be vigilant. If mm-hmm. you travel, that has to be a part of your routine. Mm-hmm. When you come back home, uh, when I travel, I take all my clothes, I throw them directly into a dryer, right yeah, into the yeah. garage on, on hard floor where you can see something Is come it the off. Heat? It's the yeah, heat. Yeah. Dryer, high heat, mm. uh, 30 minutes, that'll get rid of whatever yeah, bed yeah. bugs are on there. Just be safe. Just be safe and just do that. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay. Uh, I want to make sure, though, uh, Sandwich Isle Pest Solutions... Uh, when you when you first get a call for a bed bug, oh. what's the triage? What do you guys do to, to estimate or to give me, the homeowner, an idea what it's going to have a cost to identify the problem and then deal with it? Uh, identification, that portion is free. We'll come mm. in there and let you know you do or do not have a problem. And then if you do have a problem, there are a handful yeah. of solutions. Mm-hmm. Um, one of the most unique solutions that we have for apartments or condos uh, is, especially in Hawaii, we have smaller mm-hmm. living units and mm-hmm. more stuff. People generally yeah, have we're a lot more stuff. closer together, too. You know? we, yeah. we are, yeah. right? And so in bad situations where bed bugs have infested a lot of your stuff, they'll infest books, clothes, mm-hmm. um, chairs, couches. We actually have a team that will come in with a moving truck, and we'll pack everything up for you, mm-hmm. okay? And we'll load it up into our truck. We'll take that truck to our facility. We'll inject a gas into all your belongings. Um, the gas is sulfurofluoride, but it doesn't have any effect on your mm-hmm. electronics. Mm-hmm. It doesn't stick to anything. It's not going to affect anything. It allows us to have a clearer area in your living unit mm-hmm. to treat, get rid of the bed bugs. And then it allows us to kill all the bed bugs in your belongings, and then we can bring it back. And, you know, gang, this is not a just flip the switch and it's power, right? I mean, this this is going to take a while. And and from what I understand, uh, you guys are so good at what you do. Uh-huh. And, and I know the guarantees are such that once somebody does sign up for you, you're going to take care of the problem. You stand behind it. We do. Yeah. We, we take care of the problems. Um, we do a very good job of fulfilling our promises. If somebody's not satisfied with it, yeah. um, straight from ownership, straight from Michael, yeah, yeah. it's get out He's there, on it. Yeah. fix it, 
do it. That's the culture that we breed with. And we're not just saying that because he's not with us today. You know? and <laughs> we'll talk about the boss behind his back. But the, the bottom line here is, gang, that, you know, San Rital stands behind what they do, and they're going to solve the problem. And there's no problem that's, that's, that's too big. And we're going to talk about that and some other things when we come back. And especially, what are some of the options you can do once you find out that, oh, my goodness, I have termites and I got to get rid of them. Hi, I'm Michael Botha, owner of Sandwich Isle Pest Solutions. You may have heard in the news recently that bed bugs have made a big comeback. A few years ago, we received one or two bed bug calls a year. Now we're recording two to three a day. Bed bugs are parasites that feed on human blood, often while the victim is asleep in their bed. Since they're only active at night, you may have no idea that they're present. If you think you may have bed bugs, please call me at 456-7716. We can help you remove them from your home. Sleep tight and don't let the bed bugs bite. Why do you need termite protection? My home is very important to me. Your home is your castle. My home is everything to me. Our customers want to protect their investment. That's why they hire Sandwich Isle to protect their home from termites. There are some homes out there that are going to get termites. You can spend thousands and thousands of dollars to repair damage. You need to protect your house, and Sandwich Isle protects ours. That's Sandwich Isle Pest Solutions. Expect more and get it. Yeah, I mean, that's what you're getting today, a double dose of uh, Sandwich Isles. Uh, Ian Mateo is with us. He's the GM. Uh, started uh, at, at the at the uh, Centricon level, as a matter of fact, in back in 2002 is when he started. So you actually had a lot of boots on the ground stuff with this, and we explained a little bit how that has changed a lot. I want to shift gears and, and talk a little mm-hmm. bit about uh, termites. Uh, where do they come from? How do, you get, how do they get detected? And then how do you decide through Sandwich Isle, what the most logical treatment program is going to be? Well, you can start by figuring out which half of the termite spectrum you're on. So right. Yeah, you, by the way, <laughs> you can run. It's like my friend Dog Chapman, you know, when I, on my regular show. You can run, but you can't hide. You know, It's a, it's a fact. Yeah. It's a yeah. fact. So yeah. uh, if you have termites, you're either going to have dry wood termites, mm-hmm. um, and those are the termites that present with fecal pellets, Mm-hmm. Frass. They kind of look like sand. Um, mm-hmm. They're generally pretty clean, not mixed with anything else. By the way, Ian, a lot of people think I just vacuum that up; it's no problem. Yeah, you know, you, you can't. If it, you, if it comes back, and the next week there's another pile, and the next week there's another pile, you're kidding yourself. Hey, when you vacuum yeah. up the pellets, you're vacuuming up a little piece of your home. Yeah. I mean, that's <laughs> yeah, that, that's yeah, what the pellets are. are. <laughs> yeah, right. So yeah. you will vacuum up yeah. the pellets, but you're not getting rid of yeah. the problem. Is, is every time you leave your house, would you take a two by four with you? Would you rip <laughs> one out of the wall? Because that's what's happening. That, that, that you is, you know, two by four a day is getting eaten by these things. That, that is, an that is what's happening. Yeah. Yeah. So you know, if you have fecal pellets, that's mm. a sign of dry wood dry termites. Wood termites. Dry wood okay. termites. But mm-hmm. the real creepy crawlers that I'm worried about mm-hmm. are the ones that come in through the slab. People think, well, I got a slab. It's you know, the slab is porous, right? Just porous. What is the difference in the damage done by dry wood and ground? Is it the same? It is not the same. Yeah, see? So dry wood termites, mm-hmm. um, their colony numbers are in a, a couple of hundred. Okay. okay. Ground termites, those generally number here in Hawaii, 2 to 10 million members in a colony. Yeah, okay. So listen, that means if you've got Auntie's coal wood rocker over there that dry wood <laughs> termites got into, and you take it down to Sandwich Island, they put it in the oven, and they, and they fix it, and they kill all the termites, you're okay. But what you don't see is what is really going to get you. you what you don't mm. see are, are ground termites, mm. which can pop up through cracks in the foundation. Uh, they'll come the numbers up, you just gave me is frightening. I never knew that. One sixteenth of an inch. Take yeah. a piece of paper. That's all yeah, they yeah, need. Yeah, yeah. Um, plumbing penetrations. So mm. all the pipes that, that run into your house, they come through the concrete. So, you know, sometimes that, that penetration separates, and that's enough room for ground termites to come what, up from. What happens to the people that say that identify the problem mm-hmm. and you go out and deal with it? I do know that the ongoing monitoring is really important. But what about uh, taking care of the problem that, that let them in in the first place? That, to me, has got to be equally as important. Who does that? Um, we don't currently do mm-hmm. that, that level of work, uh, construction level of work, but we will let you know right. as experts, this is what you need to do so that your home is not as conducive to these ground termites. Yeah, certainly you want to be uh, aware of uh, the things that he's talking about is if you have a home inspection done or Sandwich Isle comes to, out to appraise what it's going to take to get rid of your termites or to, to manage your problem, then you also must think of a handyman or if you have the ability to do it yourself to listen to what he is saying. So let's go through some of those things again that are the obvious. You talked earlier about screens. 
Mm-hmm. This is, they're swarming right now, and I know that we're talking about ground termites as far and 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 but even a ground termite swarms. Even and ground that termites swarm. Come in that screen too, and those guys will come into the screen mm-hmm. too. So most people chalk termites up to the flying ones and the yeah. not so flying yeah. ones. Both species swarm. Both species mm-hmm. fly. So you have to protect your home. A ground termite swarmer can theoretically swarm into your house if there's a moisture yeah. condition in your house, a cracked pipe, a leaky tub. If he's able to find that, he'll establish a colony yeah. separate from the ground. Yeah, now let's make sure that, you, that, that people get it. If you're going to have termite infestation and damage, you're almost better with the dry wood guys because the colony's smaller. And once you found out what they're eating, you can fix that. But talk about maybe what's going on that you don't see. Uh, why why people should be way more alarmed about a ground termite infestation. Um, again, just the volume of numbers, mm-hmm. 2 to 10 million members, and ground termites will forage up to 100 yards radius from their colony. Mm-hmm. Um, and they're continuous and random foragers. So no matter what, even if they're at your neighbor's house, it's full of wood, eating, yep. Naturally, they're going to branch off from there and send another group out to look for more food sources. You know, they're very social, right? I mean, they're pretty organized. You, you know, yep. I'm, I'm I'm fascinated with. Well, we've talked before. Michael and I uh, have talked about ants, yeah, and how their colonies are. There's some, there's something going on. There's communication. These guys know what they're doing. Yep. So I, I'm what I'm guessing is going back to that church that I was talking about earlier on the program uh, on in Halava Valley on Molokai, there's sometimes when a place is damaged to the point of it's, it's history. Right. And that's, that's the big stark learning. Okay, let's talk about what you do to, uh, to work on once you've identified an infestation. Now let's talk ground termites here okay. because that's the big one. Right. What are we going to do? What are we going to do about it? You basically have two options. So you have the Centricon option with always active technology. That's what we've been talking about. Mm-hmm. It's a great option. It's a very green option. You're not putting a lot of chemical into the ground. The chemical is contained within the bait tubes mm-hmm. in the station. Um, it's a very good option. Now, how does it work? I mean, you know, I'm a termite. I get into that bait station. I bite some. I'm going to take it home to feed the others. Exactly. You just said, uh, like we discussed before, ground termites are very social. They're a social insect. Mm-hmm. So what happens is you have worker termites that are foraging. Right. He bumps into a station. He says, oh, yum, good food. He starts to leave a pheromone trail, letting other termites know, hey, there's food over here. Yeah. Other workers come to get food. That one ground termite then meets more ground termites, and he shares that food that he had. Then he goes back, and he, he feeds the babies, he feeds the soldiers, he feeds the queen. Pretty soon, the entire colony has been affected. They don't quite know it yet, but they've been yeah. affected. Um, and then a period of time later, the entire colony just collapses. Okay, now, that's where I, what I find fascinating, because let's assume, like my house, mm-hmm. I, I don't know how many stations I have, but probably about... I mean, typically, what, 25, 30 stations? If, On your average home, yeah. You know, or whatever. So, uh, so, but this infestation can be huge. I mean, there are lots of individuals. And yet, yeah. so, you, so what you're saying is that is it likely that the Centricon is going to take care of that? Or do you, does that just give you an indication that, hey, there's a bigger problem here than just this bait. we got to do something to eliminate these things. The great thing about Centricon is that it does take care of the entire colony. So you don't have to worry about, I just treated the ones that were here. Mm-hmm. Those ground termites, no matter how far away they're foraging, they have to take food back to the queen and the babies. Those guys can't eat on their own. Mm-hmm. The workers that found the food have to go share it. Right. So now they're sharing this chemical around. They're sharing the Noviflumeron. Now that's mixing around with the babies. It's mixing around with the queen. And that's how you achieve total colony elimination. Now, I do know that in an ideal world, the flip of the switch, we are in an instant gratification society. Uh-huh. This takes a little longer than than than, than not. Uh-huh. But, but what is your experience as to once you've identified that through that, how, how effective can you tell it's working? The biggest challenge with ground termites is finding where they are. Mm-hmm. So if you can find where they are, the world is your oyster as far as yeah. getting rid of them. That's the biggest part. So once you find where they are, it's really a matter of time before the colony collapses. You can deliver bait directly to the mm-hmm. ground termites. If you chose a liquid treatment, you can deliver liquid directly to the ground termites. Okay, now make sure that people understand where this colony is living. Yeah. Okay, is it living in in a, in in wood in the forest in my in the landscaping? Is it living in my house in the in the in the in the flooring structure? Where is it? It could be all of the above. Mm-hmm. I mean, the the central colony um, is probably not living at your house. It's probably underground 
somewhere. Mm-hmm. Um, but all these branches of them, imagine like fingers yeah. off your hand going into every single direction. They're establishing yeah. little satellite colonies. They're establishing areas where they can draw food from. Yeah, because people, you have to understand this. And I've come to learn it a little bit. But yeah. one of the reasons why do, we do this program, What's Bugging You, is to, is to point this out. They are there. Yeah. I mean, it's Absolutely. it's not uh, just the sales pitch that we're talking about, two types of houses, those with <laughs> – because, once again, you know, if the Centricon treatment yeah. is, is a treatment that will get rid of the entire colony, yeah. this makes someone really, really relaxed. Uh-huh. Okay, so how much – do, how do we determine what sort of a system I need and what's it going to cost me based on what size, number of stations, difficulty of servicing? What are some of the some of the moving mo- moving parts of this? There are a few factors: size, difficulty of the job. Mm-hmm. If you already have an active infestation, it's probably going to cost you a little bit more. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's going to just going to take a little bit more time. If it's a preventative treatment. It's less. Mm-hmm. Um, if you're ahead of it, trying to stay ahead of it, then with our guarantees, even if you get an active infestation. I do know that, you know, as, as a lot of people know, my wife's a realtor. This is a big plus. When you have a Centricon mm-hmm. system, when you're talking about, well, I got, a, I got an alarm, it's got, it's got solar hot water, it's got Centricon. I mean, uh-huh. it makes people this comfort level that that brand has got over the years is very, uh, uh, very rewarding, I would imagine. You, you, you were in that from the beginning of, of it almost. It was my first job. Yeah, yeah. I, I came on board as a Centricon technician, yeah. and I, I'm proud of it as, mm-hmm. as a GM. I've seen the evolution of Centricon, and we're sold into the new technologies of it. So Yeah, make sure that people understand one more time, Ian, the difference between what was done before, what it was. That was when the bait was this little piece of pine or whatever it was, uh-huh. and it would give your technician the knowledge that there's termites here, or we have a problem. Yeah, the yeah. Centricon, when I started, mm-hmm. uh, was a plastic station with southern yellow pine wood as a wood monitoring yeah, yeah, device. Yeah. Nothing special. People, some people thought it would sprayed with something, mm-hmm. but it was nothing special on it, just southern yellow pine wood. As a technician, I'd come out, I'd monitor this the wood sticks. If there were ground termites in it, I'd shake the ground termites out of the wood stick into a bait tube, put that back into the ground. Mm-hmm. Today's technology is different. From the yeah. moment we install Centricon on your yeah. property, you have active bait in the ground already there are people that get really worried about this uh, from a couple of different standpoints talk about weather because mm-hmm. i do know that there are certain people who say oh you know what where i live it's raining all the time there's just pools of water all the time How, do these things still work if they get wet they still work when they get wet mm-hmm. so uh, we've found that uh, we've been participating with the active the always active technology now for two years mm-hmm. and a lot of those baits are still good um yeah. But that's why you continue to work with Sandwich Chow. When the baits start to deteriorate, we replace yeah. them for you. Yeah, and by the way, that's common. I mean, and, and the efficiency level, and that's the other thing. I, we need to talk about people again because, you know, whether or not you know it, if your ears are burning, uh, Michael really, really appreciates all of you all that have been with the company, guys like you that have been around for a while. It's very it's very rewarding, and, I, and I'm going to say – it has become because of the amount of damage being done to our homes mm-hmm. an honorable profession in other words you have to you have to be somebody to get into this business you do mm-hmm. and i'm i'm proud to be a part of our company mm-hmm. i'm proud to be a part of our company that promotes a culture of learning that promotes a culture of building its employees up mm-hmm. um so yeah we are constantly looking for good employees i know your customers uh, and, and like me, um, I have uh, – it's, it's kind of funny because I haven't made a joke of it, but I had somebody that was doing our Centricon for about 10 years, and I've lost him. He got promoted. <laughs> he, got, he got upgraded. And, 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 and I used to look so forward to it. But now I know that every replacement person yeah. get, knows it. But isn't it sort of true that, that your technicians are area-specific in many cases so that it's going to be the kind of the same – person most of the time at your house yes and you know you you live here on oahu mm-hmm. traffic is horrendous oh, tell me. um yeah. so as a business we've had to become more efficient mm-hmm. so our technicians now really work off of geography right. so you'll have a technician who's assigned to a very specific geographical area mm-hmm. this is my area these are all the clients i'm going to take care of whether or not it's for ground termites with centricon 
or for ants, roaches, centipedes, rodents. Yeah. Doesn't matter. Yeah, and that there therein lies another division. Let's make sure that people understand. The Centricon treatment, this ground treatment, uh, is mm-hmm. is a wonderful program that's that's improved, that's changed and everything else. But that doesn't limit the technician. I mean, the, the your guys and gals, they're pretty aware. They come in my yard and they'll just say, Hey, you got some ants I treated. Uh-huh. But you know, tell me that. Tell me how how your guys are going to go out of their way to not create work, but to be observant on behalf of your customers. Look, our technicians are trained that a home that they're servicing, that's their responsibility. That's mm-hmm. their kuleana. Hey, they got to take care of that home. Mm-hmm. They got to take care of that family that's within that home. So if there's anything that they can mention, yeah. if you've got a wood pile on the ground that's yeah. going to attract ground termites, mm-hmm. they're trained to say, hey, you might want to move that off the ground there. Let me give you an example. I got uh-huh. a note last time you guys were there, I got a note and it says, uh, please be aware that some of your palm trees are touching the roof. Yeah. And and I already know that's a bridge, right? <laughs> that's Every a bridge. Every creepy crawly is going <laughs> to just thank you very much for providing this bridge into my house. But it's also true for just little things like maintenance. I mean, if you have that palm trees around your house and they're blowing back and forth, it's, it's damaging your roof, it's damaging your paint. These guys are aware of that. Yeah, yeah. these guys are aware yeah. of that. And if they can help out in other areas, if that mm. helps you, it has nothing to do with pest mm. control, great. They're yeah. helping our client. And that's, that's really the business that we're in what well, talk about the takeaway for a job well done i mean you've been in it for a long enough time now i bet you that there were times in your career earlier where your observance paid off to the point where a homeowner either got rid of a real issue that they had or saved a bunch of money in in what it would have cost to say dismantle or repair a, repair a building yeah in in my career uh if there's been Countless. many times yeah, sure. <laughs> that i've been able to point something out and Oftentimes, it's something very small, Mm -hmm. a two-by-four, a piece of plywood that's underneath the house. Um, Something like that can create a bridgeway for ground termites specifically to come up and just destroy things. So I've been very fortunate to be able to help people out on that level. People that haven't seen the real destruction. Mm Mm-hmm that these things do. You guys have a great website, yeah. you know, and, and, and you must be very proud of the fact that you can go to sandwichisle.com, uh, S-A-N-D-W-I-C-H-I-S-L-E.com and learn about this. But I think too, I want to make sure that, that we blow uh, your horn a little bit because um, sometimes Michael Botha, the president, doesn't brag enough about the the level of expertise that Sandwich Isle has. You guys are 92nd out of a, a, in the country in this. What a, what an honor that must be. 92nd. Um, so we're on the top 100 yeah. list. 92nd. And there are thousands and thousands, by the way, right? It's a national this a survey. Yeah, this, yeah. this is a national survey. So yeah. out of the out of all the companies in America, 92nd. And it, it's a testament to our people, mostly. It's a testament to Michael and his hard work, but promoting people that can help the company grow. Before we go into the next segment of the program where we're going to talk about some other creepy, crawly things, let's talk about the opportunity of employment. If somebody is interested, can they go online to find that out? I do know that you're, you guys have are constantly recruiting. There's been mm-hmm. exponential growth. You guys are growing at more than 15% a year. You need people. We need people. Yeah, we yeah, need yeah, good yeah, people. Yeah. So yeah. go on to our website. Website, come into our office, call our office, uh, our phone number. Five six seven seven one six. We're always looking and, for and, good people. Yeah, and by the way, uh, or, or you go to www sandwich aisle, s a n d w i c h i l i s l e dot com. And when we come back after a short little message uh, from President Michael Botha, we're going to talk about some other things. And unfortunately, your dirty rat's going to be one of them. <laughs> Why do you need termite protection? My home is very important to me. Your home is your castle. My home is everything to me. Our customers want to protect their investment. That's why they hire Sandwich Isle to protect their home from termites. There are some homes out there that are going to get termites. You can spend thousands and thousands of dollars to repair damage. You need to protect your house, and Sandwich Isle protects ours. That's Sandwich Isle Pest Solutions. Expect more and get it. Hi, I'm Michael Botha, owner of Sandwich Isle Pest Solutions. You may have heard in the news recently that bed bugs have made a big comeback. A few years ago, we received one or two bed bug calls a year. Now we are recording two to three a day. Bed bugs are parasites that feed on human blood, often while the victim is asleep in their bed. Since they're only active at night, you may have no idea that they are present. If you think you may have bed bugs, please call me at 456-7716. We can help you remove them from your home. Sleep tight and don't let the bed bugs bite. Ah, 
Uh, that's mighty good advice. All right, Ian, Matt, Mateo is here. We're talking sandwich aisle pest solutions right now. And one of the things that we try to do on this program, as you know, Ian, is give people a heads up on what's happening and, and maybe why – you know, season-wise, why it's happening, and I do know that right now we're spending, we're going to be spending a lot more time outdoors yep. because it's summertime and the kids are going to be on, you know, on break and all this kind of stuff. I want to talk about rodents, not because they're spooky and scary, and even grown men spook at the sign of a mouse or a rat, but that we have a, a bigger problem than some might understand. I'm not sure if it's seasonal or not, but is it my imagination, or are we having more? people worried about rodents right now than, than say, when it, in the rainy season? We are. We're, we're experiencing a, a fair influx of rodent calls. Mm-hmm. Um, in Hawaii, most pests, including rodents, can thrive all year long. This summer's been... Yeah, a, we have two seasons, right? Summer <laughs> and almost summer. Summer yeah, and almost yeah. summer. But this season, I mean, it's we've had a lot of rodent calls lately. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now, when we talk about rodent calls here... Um, I do know that there's there's mice and there's rats, and that's what most people think. There's mice and there's rats. Uh-huh. But they're divisional. Are there some that are more problematic than others? Are there some that like indoors more than outdoors? How many different kind of rats or rodents are we dealing with in Hawaii? Uh, in Hawaii, there are three types of rats that we deal with, mm-hmm. the Norway rat, the roof rat, and the Polynesian rat. Yeah. Now, what's the big one? The big one is the Norway rat. Yeah, yeah. That's the big, juicy one. Mm-hmm. But the roof rat is the most common. So okay. if you have rats, chances are it's probably a roof rat. All right. Now, I do know mm-hmm. that on a quiet summer night when there's no breezes and the TV's off, every now and again people will hear little little things, right? Scampering. Scampering around. <laughs> uh, I always was told, I think my dad wanted to tell us that because he didn't want to, oh, those, there's some birds up there. Don't worry about it. Uh, <laughs> what, what, what are some of the signs? I mean, you know, if... Some people don't see them until it's too late. What are some of the signs that you may have a rat infestation or a problem? Well, some of the most obvious signs are, are they eating your food? Yeah. yeah, You know, is a bag of rice, Mm -hmm. uh, your 20-pound bag of rice everybody has in their pantry? Is there a hole in it? Wait, wait, wait a minute. I got to tell you this. (laughs) Yeah. I have, we have dogs. And everybody that has dogs, and we have our dog food in these plastic containers with a screw top and an O-ring. Rats will eat right through that plastic container and take all that 50 pounds of dog food out of there. Amazing, isn't it? It's amazing. They have a very keen sense of smell. Mm -hmm. And, yeah, they'll they'll chew right through the plastic. That's easy for them. And I thought, now, this is like a vault. Uh Uh-uh. You still got to keep. But but what I don't want people to get all panicky and all worried about it. But, you know, in in that we have these different species, um, what, uh, what kind of damage do they cause? I mean, do they cause damage to things other than the economy of losing some food? What, what, what are, why are rats a problem? Uh, rats are, pro- are a problem uh, nationwide. Mm-hmm. You know, they damage a lot of crops. Um, 20% of the agricultural products in the world are, are destroyed uh, yeah. by rats. But specifically yeah. in your home, uh, besides eating your food, mm-hmm. besides the fact that rats can't hold their urine or, yeah. or poop, so wherever yeah. they go, they don't even know they're doing it. They're just leaking urine. Everywhere. Everywhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. so rat urine, they're leaking, no matter if they're crawling through your pantry, yeah. on your counters, in your bathroom. Um, but they'll chew through stuff. So yeah. their teeth grow at about four inches per year, so they constantly have to gnaw on things to shave so their Teeth, teeth, teeth. See, here's the thing that I'm worried about. Everybody is worried about, you know, getting bitten by a rat and all that. We're going to talk about that in a minute. Uh-huh. But what we're really talking about is that if you go unchecked with this, if you've got a problem, um, I'm worried about the, you know, fire. I'm worried about them eating through wires. Some of the horror stories that we've heard. And you guys, I know that this is an issue, that this is a big problem sometimes. It, it can yeah, be. Yeah. So imagine a hot, dry attic. A rat is running around wild in there. He needs to chew on something. So he chews on some of the electrical cords that's up there. He yeah. chews the yeah. plastic insulation off of it. Some electrical cords start to touch each other, and it creates a fire hazard. Um, yeah. It's actually more common than people think. No, I, I believe that. And I do know also that you know they're, they're on a constant search for water. Uh, yeah. And from what I understand is a lot of these homes now are using um, you know, different kind of Water pipes, and we used to have all galvanized pipes, and then copper pipes, and or whatever. Now there's a lot of uh, PVC. There's a lot of plastic, and yep. I, from what I understand, you even are that's susceptible. That's susceptible. Yeah. I mean, uh, rats will chew right through that stuff. They'll go right onto the roof, right onto your your vent pipes, those plastic vent pipes. Crawl down yeah. them, and and where it use off, they'll chew right through that. And then get into your home from there. Here's the thing that I find that, that, that people don't understand, and I had a tough time with it. 
They're not like us. They can do things physically that, that we can't do. In uh-huh. other words, a rat, you know, remember before you'd see a coconut tree with that, with that tin around it, right? right. You think, okay, that's it. Those things can climb right past that, get up there and eat those coconuts. And if they can do that, you can imagine what they can do to your house. Yeah, a rat from a standing position mm-hmm. will jump four feet up. Oh, from a standing position. If we do that, we'd win the Olympics, <laughs> right? We would. Yeah. <laughs> they'll jump oh, four, four feet oh, up my. from a standing position on top yeah. of a tree. Mm-hmm. They'll jump four to six feet across. So if you yeah. think you've got some clearance from the trees in your yeah, home, yeah. they'll jump right across onto your roof. It, it, it is so frightening. And, and I don't want to, I mean, sir, we're going to talk about bites and everything else. But is there any reason to fear getting bit by a rodent? I mean, I know that, you know, every now and then we'll see in the paper where a baby uh-huh. I was bitten. I uh-huh. mean, something like that. Are they going to bite you on purpose, or are you just in their way? You're probably just in their way mm-hmm. um, if you get bit. But getting bit by a rat is a big deal. Yeah. I mean, they're nasty, filthy creatures. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and not to scare you, but, I mean, it's chalked up that rats have killed more people over the last 10 centuries than the, all the casualties of wars and yeah. uh, revolutions combined. How scary is that? How know? scary is yeah, that? Yeah, and, and by the way... Um, uh, I know this comes up. This is you guys don't have ambulances, but what happens? <laughs> what should a person do if they or or a family member gets bitten? So there's two things they should do. Mm-hmm. Okay, go seek medical professional help right, right off the bat. Right yeah. off the bat, call their doctor. Say, hey, I got bit by yeah. a rat. What should I do? Make sure you're up to date with all your tetanus shots mm-hmm. and, and your vaccines and whatnot. The second thing you need to do is call a professional to come in. Okay, that's <laughs> where I need to get. Look, gang, you have rats. I've got rats in my yard. I'm lucky. Uh, they, I, I've never seen one in the house, knock on wood. That doesn't mean they're not there, uh-huh. but I've never seen one. Uh, but I live out in Hawaii Kai, uh, this time of the year, there's a lot of people with moss rock walls. Let's talk about when somebody finally figures it out that they've got an infestation problem. Okay. What sandwich owl is going to do? How do you come out and triage a yard or a house and find out what's going on? And then what are the options? Some of the basic things that we do is a professional will come out and they'll tell you. They'll look around the home. They'll say, mm-hmm. these are the things you need to do to mm-hmm. patch things up. Mm-hmm. You have a gap underneath your front door. Hey, sometimes rats and mice yeah. will come right through the front door. And by the way, the space they need is really small. Yeah. A, a rat, if he can stick his head through the hole, yeah, he's gonna get through it. he can stick his body through it. Ooh. So a quarter. If you yeah. if you take a quarter, that's about the size they need to get through. A mouse, about a nickel, is what he needs to yeah, get his yeah. body through. Um, so that's one of the basic mm-hmm. things that we'll do is we'll walk around the home and say, look, clean up this mulch pile here. Mm-hmm. Trim back your tree so the rats don't jump across your mm-hmm. home. Hey, by the way, 50-foot fall, rat walks away from it just fine. Yeah, see, that's another part <laughs> I find amazing. Uh, Ian was talking about how uh, they can this vertical leap they have. They can also fall off a roof and just walk away. Walk away just fine. Yeah, yeah. Fifty feet. Hey, they missed the jump. No you big have deal. To take me straight to the clinic. You know, <laughs> or, you know, but but see here now. This is in the way of uh, of examination and prevention. But what about if you've got them? How do we come to get rid of them? Because buying a couple of rat traps down at the hardware store is not going to do it in a lot of cases. It it. it Probably won't. Yeah. And, and I mean, that's why our industry exists. Look, yeah. we'll, we'll put rodent bait stations around your home. Mm-hmm. Um, they're locked stations that contain a rodenticide. So a food yeah. source yeah. that we leave outside for the rat. So they have less right, of right. a reason to come right, inside. Right, right. They come, they feed on the bait, and then they die. Um, we'll also set up traps inside you know, your when home. you say that, yeah. I do know, and, and I want to talk to you about one product that I okay. think is a wonderful product, and we've talked about it before, and that's what, if, if people are being proactive, they can get this thing called the rat zapper. And it's expensive, but it, it electrocutes a rat, mm-hmm. and, and, it, and it can kill lots of rats with just a set of batteries, but, and you don't have to touch them. But there are problems if you have a rat trap. The people uh-huh. think, well, I got rat traps. I've had them for 20 years. Uh, but they don't seem to be working. Well, how come? Because from what I guess, rats smell them. They don't like it. They think this is no good. Well, rats yeah. will get smart. Mm-hmm. I mean, they'll figure out, hey, that thing right there killed a few it cousins of mine. Yeah. yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I don't yeah. like that thing. Yeah. I'm going to go around that, mm. and they'll figure that out. The ones easily. that you guys do, mm-hmm. I know in homes, condo buildings, restaurants, community associations, uh, is that's a bait that's going to kill them, but they don't die right there. They go somewhere else and die? Um, most of the baits that we use, mm-hmm. they need to go drink water first before the baits are activated. Gotcha. So they'll eat the bait, and then they'll go off, and wherever their water source gotta is. Got to have a lot of water, right? Got to have a lot of water. They'll drink some water, and mm-hmm. then that'll activate the bait, and then they'll mm-hmm. die. Um, but that's just one part of the process. Mm-hmm. The other 
part is yeah. going inside and, and setting up traps. But yeah. you set them up smart like you set yeah, them up yeah. like a rat and that's what our guys yeah, do yeah, yeah. they start thinking if i'm a rat where am i going where are the signs telling mm -hmm. me uh, rats move a lot off of memory okay so really that's they'll, interesting they'll yeah. establish yeah. a path and their body their muscles will simply react to the last time they ran that same path and so our, our technicians are training like high tech right it's, yeah, it's high yeah, tech yeah. right they don't have to be very smart they just gotta remember their muscles and their muscles will take them exactly where the last food source was wow uh, okay, so let's say we've got them, yeah, and and that we're going to do, we're going to look at the thing. Your guys are going to, the the technician is going to recommend. All right, here's what we're going to do. We have to put these stations around here. There's a lot outside. We got to we got to get them taking some of this bait back to their place. But what about the inside ones? You see them inside. Is that stuff safe around pets and and kids? So every. Every situation is a little bit different. Mm -hmm. If you have pets, if you have kids, we'll tailor that to your specific home gotcha. and your family. Okay, So we would use different types of traps on the inside that are a bit safer for pets mm -hmm. and kids. Mm -hmm. um, if you have small dogs or, or dogs in general, you wouldn't put glue traps out yeah, yeah, exactly. in the living room where a dog are can they, get stuck Are on. they pretty good, by the way, for rodents, uh, glue traps? They are. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Glue traps are a highly effective and way. And what you're going to do, gang, when that glue trap, so you know what that is, is they get stuck right there and they die right there. They they get stuck right yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. They die right there. Uh, one of the good things about glue traps is that um, the body itself is all contained in right, the glue just trap. Toss it. Just yeah, toss, yeah, toss the yeah. whole thing. Yeah. Uh, okay. Now, just as free advice for somebody that's going to do that, and they've got the old, they got uh, you know, uh, Papa's old, uh, you know, slam over rat trap. Uh huh. I know you get asked this all the time. Hey, Ian, what's the best bait to put in a rat trap? What's the best bait? The best bait to put in a rat trap. Yeah is whatever food they're eating at your home. Okay. So generally speaking, right. you'll have rats gnawing at something, right. whether or not you have some crackers, crackers bread, rice, bread yeah. whatever it is, whatever mm. they were gnawing on last, mm. take that and put that in the trap. Okay, now, but if it's one of those traps that comes over and boom, uh -huh. and it's got that bait, uh, you know, you, you always see on the cartoons before it was always cheese, right? Uh -huh. But then somebody said, well, what about peanut butter? For some reason, I don't know if the peanut butter guys made that up or what, but is it true that that works pretty good too? Uh, if if they're eating the peanut butter to begin with, I don't know if peanut yeah. butter is any more effective at, at drawing rats mm -hmm. into than any other food up there. But I noticed one thing, and I talked to you off the air about this, uh, in, in our yard, and and we love it. Uh, we have you know a couple of different fruits and things. They love lily koi. They eat a lot of our lily koi. Uh -huh. And they for some reason they love noni. Okay. So that that must mean that these guys are going to eat whatever is out there. The rat species that is most dominant here, the roof rat. Mm -hmm. um, naturally, they're a fruit and nut eating rat. So mm -hmm. that that comes natural to them. They've adapted to yeah. your home yeah, to yeah. survive in your home, but you know they think that everything uh, is free game. I, I, I got to tell you, I freaked out a couple of weeks ago because I was out in our yard at night, and we have uh, probably the tree. It's a macadamia nut tree, uh -huh. and it's probably fifty years old. Okay, and it's termite, -y and and we got to get rid of it, and we we've been reluctant to do it. But boy, you always see a rat up there. They love their mac nuts. Hey, who doesn't like macadamia nuts? Come on. <laughs> that's, that's, a, that's a guarantee. All right. I want to make sure, though, that people understand uh, what this is all about. When you, when you, when you don't know what to do, uh, real quickly, let's spend one minute in yeah. how you can keep rats out. Once you've identified a problem and you've killed a few, all right, you've taken care of the problem. But what do you do to stop it from coming back? Um, you seal up the home. Make mm -hmm. sure there aren't any gaps in your home, physical gaps that rats or mice can't get into. You trim back shrubbery, you trim back shr trees yep. so that they're not nesting outside. And that really sort of creates a, a, a level of zone protection against them. Okay. Now, it, it, it doesn't happen overnight, right? What about what about when, when you're in like a crawl space? We have a lot of posts on pier houses here, uh -huh. underneath there. What uh -huh. can you do if, to look around to see if you got a problem? You know, it's hard. A lot of our posts and pier houses, uh, they're not very tall. So oftentimes you need a professional to go you under get there. In there. You guys got to get in there. Right? We squeeze in there. We'll send a little guy. Obviously not me. Um, or me. <laughs> I'm off that day, boss. Yeah, <laughs> but but seriously, I think this this speaks once again to the to the opportunity to become a professional, Ian Mateo. So before we leave today, let's make sure you, people know that uh, you guys are constantly recruiting. I mean, it's a, it's an ongoing issue, isn't it? It's an ongoing you, issue. Who, 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 who uh, you know? Wh who do you look? Who are you looking for? Look. You don't need experience to work in our industry. Mm -hmm. We we want you to have a good attitude. If you're somebody who likes to work hard, 
somebody who cares about what they do, somebody who cares about other people and who you want to make a difference. Yep. That's the cool thing about our business is that we're helping people. We're making yeah. a difference. Yeah, um, and by the way, the takeaway from that is just so fantastic. I mean, the way you feel when you've, when you've done something for somebody. I know that every now and again you, you guys give me my monthly report, huh? and it's like with a smile. Hey, no problems this month. You guys, And it's thorough, isn't it? Yeah. It is. Yeah. It's, it, it's thorough. Okay, so that being said, uh, we want to thank you for uh, being here, Ian, today. Uh, thanks for jumping in. And also, thank you for listening. Uh, if you like what you heard, tell everybody. We'll be back in next week in the meantime. Uh, you want to call Sandwich Isle Pest Solutions because there's two types of houses, right? There are houses that have termites and houses that will get them. And and your house is one of those. <laughs> it's it's you're, you're one of those. So make sure that you jump in to call four five six seven seven one six four five six seven seven one six or better yet, go online right now. Thanks, man. SandwichIsle.com. SandwichIsle.com. See you next time. Well, that's our show for today. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next time. And if something is bugging you, jump online and get the bug at sandwichisle.com. That's sandwichisle.com.